So the first part, learning how to film. When you are filming, obviously you could use an iPhone, you could use a DSLR, you could use mirrorless cameras. So the first thing that you should always do with your camera, make sure the quality is the exact same on all your cameras that you're gonna be using. Your iPhone, make sure your iPhone matches the same quality as the quality on DSLR or mirrorless camera or whatever you have. And the reason for that is because let's say you have 720 on one camera and 1080 on the other and then you're exporting your project to 1080 which I'll get into that later. That 720 is gonna come out very grainy, very unprofessional. Set it to 1080 by 60 frames and always use 60 frames. Don't go to 30, don't go to 25 because if you're trying to slow-mo a trick and you forget to change your settings then it's gonna mess up the whole trick. So you might as well just keep everything at 60 frames per second. You could always go down to 30 frames if really necessary but most of the time just keep it at 60 and you could do the same thing with your iPhone as well so you just go to settings you go to camera and then you go change your quality to 1080 by 60 frames and make sure the quality is the same so 1080 by uh, 60 frames in your camera worst case scenario if you are running out of space change your camera to 720 by 60 frames and change your iPhone settings or your Android settings to 70, 720 by 60 frames. So now that you have your quality set up on your cameras, now you're going out to skating. Now what I recommend you getting, you should always get yourself a tripod. If you're using iPhone, get yourself a iPhone adapter or for your camera. So that way you are able to film steady shots. You can just get one off Amazon, I got one for $15. If you're just beginning, you don't need the professionals where it's like on remote. Usually what I like to do is I like to have a tripod and I like to go filming by myself. If you're filming someone else, then that is not an issue. Uh, but most of the time when you're going out, it's better to just go out by yourself because nobody's going to get in the way. The other reason is because you get a lot more stuff done because you're not worried about your other friends getting in the way or they want to take the time from you that you had to go skate or whatever reason it is. You got your camera on the tripod, you're at the spot, whatever, and you're ready to film. Film yourself or whoever you are filming. So what I like to do is, I like to stay at least seven to eight feet from where I'm gonna be landing. This is the ledge. And I'm gonna be landing right over here. I count about six footsteps from that area. And the reason for that is because you wanna protect your equipment. But you don't want your camera so far away that the quality of the footage starts getting grainy. Make sure when you are filming yourself that your camera is pointed towards the corner, your whole body fits in it, and your body is also centered. If you need to adjust, adjust. You could go further, you, go, you could go back. So for every foot that you take back, you're going to be losing quality in your footage. So you want to have that balance between quality and being able to protect your equipment and having that space to land. So it's a lot to account for, but that's where you have to use your own judgment to figure out what is best for you. And if you're trying to make a post for Instagram or if you're doing a, another video or whatever, you always want your footage centered because then if you get out of frame for whatever reason, then you're not gonna, you can't use that clip anymore. So you always wanna make sure your camera is centered. And if you don't know if it's centered or not, you have the option of going into your settings and putting a grid on. And the middle box is where it's gonna be centered. Later, you'll get more experience with filming and being able to get yourself centered and being able to get the footage right. But for now, just make sure you're centered. So let's say you were filming yourself. Make a mental note or write it down your phone what trick or whatever slams you wanna use in your project. I'm gonna take the example from my Halloween edit. All right, so the order that I landed all my tricks in that edit was front shove, half cap, fakey front side, half cap, kick flip, 360 shove it, nollie flip. You make that mental note when you go back to editing, you wanna make sure that you have all those clips and whatever slams you wanna take. If you wanna take, let's say, a fakie frontside 180 slam or whatever, every time you land the trick, that's when you wanna stop the footage or anytime you wanna take a slam and put it into a video, make sure you stop the recording. It's easier to just cut out the beginning and just keep the trick itself in. Well, that's gonna be more, I'm gonna go more into detail on that, just every time when you film, even if it's with your friends and you're filming with your iPhone or they're filming with the iPhone, your iPhone has a setting of being able to heart it or favorite it, so that way you know which clip it is, so you don't have to go back to it and just look for like 30 minutes, waste 30 minutes every time, try and look for when it's just right there. Then you could just trim the clip. So I use two cameras, I use the DSLR. You don't need this camera, again, you could just use an iPhone, 
And you might be asking what's better, camcorder or DSLR? DSLR, you had to focus manually. You had to make sure that everything's correct. You have to make sure that everything's, uh, you always have to keep your eye on the camera. If let's say this camera gets out of focus for even a second, it's gonna stay out of focus for the whole video. Just like I had trouble with it before, I was filming with a DSLR, but then I changed it to a camcorder. Uh, with a camcorder, it always goes to landscape or it goes to portrait tries to get the whole area and tries to keep everything in focus like if I'm talking right now it still has everything in the background if you can't keep your eye on the camera the whole time it's better to just use a camcorder I use the standard for 18 to 55 millimeters uh, you don't want to go too far you don't want to go too close to whatever subject you're filming every time when I use this camera to film myself that's why I always say use seven to eight feet because if you start zooming out with this camera, the quality is gonna get much more blurrier, much more worse because you're going further away from the subject. There's a lot of filmers that use long lens or short lens or whatever, but you personally do not need to use it unless, unless you are using it for a professional video. I recommend not using it because you're spending a lot more money than you should. Uh, the only other lens I would recommend buying other than this one is a fisheye. So specifically in skateboarding, a lot of people use a lot of fisheye. So that way they could get all the whole area where they're filming. If you are gonna be using a DSLR with a fisheye, you should always buy a handle, $15, it's not that bad. And also for the fisheye, you could just buy it on eBay. Just make sure you have the right one and make sure the condition and description that you don't get a, a shitty one. Make sure you know what you're buying. I got this for almost $300, so it was a used, it got a little bit of damage, but that is fine, it still works perfect. The way you want to film is camera a little bit further out from the end of the, from the handle, put the fisheye on. There are also, there is also other fisheyes that you could use, you could also use this one, which is the clip-on for your iPhone, but personally I do not like using the clip-ons because there's a piece inside of the fisheye that happens to move. So let's say you buy a cheap one for like $10. This one actually is really good. iPhone has a special setting inside of it, has stabilizer. And when you have stabilizer, what the iPhone is trying to do, because the iPhone has its own sensor where, let's say this is the fisheye, it starts doing this. It starts rocking the inside of the fisheye and the iPhone. And because that one piece starts moving inside of it, because it's not tightened all the way, that whole footage starts going back and in, back in, back in, and then you start getting black lines on the side. So that's why you gotta make sure you get good quality for your iPhone. This one, get, I'm telling you right now, it's very good. I, you've used it so many times. Uh, everything's still tight on the inside and the lens isn't loose. Uh, sometimes it does get the black edges, but uh, I always crop those out. So this is, you could use this for iPhone again. You don't need a crazy DSLR for like $500. If you're buying this specifically, make sure you buy it off an official website so that way you know the quality. Now I'll also talk to you about if you're using a fisheye for your iPhone. So when you're using a fisheye for your iPhone, make sure you also buy a selfie stick. If you buy a selfie stick, your footage will come out so much better than just holding it in your hand. And the reason why is because you could extend it, you could go out further in, whatever, and you don't have to worry about somebody kick flipping in your face. Very good to have yourself a selfie stick. I will show you guys how to use it, how to use a handle, so that way you're able to, when you're going out to the field, or if you're going out skating with your friends or whatever, you're filming them or they're filming you, 90% of the time, don't let them film you, film them, because if they film you, you're, they're just gonna mess up the footage. I've had my own experience of how many times I gave my friend a phone to film with, and just, I can't even use the footage because it's disgusting. Uh, but this is if you're filming flat ground or if you're filming a uh, ledge or whatever. What I like to do is pretend this is the ground. This is the handle. Keep it about a foot from the ground and start tilting your camera up. 15 to 30 degree angle. And the reason why is because a fisheye, it's wide. It's 180 degrees left to right up and down. You don't want to be just filming the ground. The purpose of you filming is to film the skater. So you tilt the camera up a little bit so that way your fisheye films less of the ground and more of the skater. 
Again, let me repeat myself. You want to add a bit of an angle, 15 to 30 degree angle, so you can film the skater, not the ground. If you keep it straight and the skater starts to ollie, what's going to happen is the ollie is going to go out of frame. You want to go with them and go back down and make sure everything's angled. So you, like that. So same thing with a selfie stick. Flip it around and try to put the camera the other way and try to put it up at an angle like this. So that way you get that perfect angle of when you're filming someone else. And again, you want to extend as much as possible or just enough so you can hold it steady and make sure that you're able to catch the camera right or catch the angle right. And you want to follow the skater again. This takes a lot of practice so if you, you can't just get it in a week. It takes about months to actually get used to you filming someone else while they're moving. So let's say you don't have any steady hands. You're terrible at filming with a fisheye. You can't film with a regular camera. Uh, I recommend going to other people's channels and watching the techniques that they use. They Most of the time they like uh, uh, bending their elbows and making sure that they don't move. When you are filming and you have very shaky hands, try to grip as hard as possible. And you're shaking, it's gonna start shaking. But if you hold it tight, it's not gonna shake as much. But if you are shaky, I still recommend using the tripod. If you have the tripod, you could just set it up and you could always turn left and right. But if you do have shaky hands, the last thing you could actually use is a gimbal. And this costs about $80, 80 to $100. This is for an iPhone gimbal. Uh, I don't know how much the professional for the DSLR costs, but I prefer not uh, buying so much. If you don't have steady hands, you have to get used to getting steady hands. Because steady hands is probably the most important skill that you could ever have. But if you cannot, like if it's worst case scenario, just get yourself a gimbal. And if you're shaking or whatever, it's going to automatically like stable itself out. So that way it doesn't shake in your footage. It keeps as stable as possible. Uh, the problem with this is the fact that if you are following someone, then it's very difficult to make sure that the camera is following them. So, so, so if you're moving, the whole you have to move the whole hand with it, or you have to move your whole uh, body with it, so that way it could keep tracking of your subject. I've used this a couple times. I don't use it that often. I, I, per, I prefer the selfie stick because the selfie stick, it, you have, it's more maneuverable and it's much more lighter than using this. Uh, but if you do really take filming seriously, then I do recommend getting it. Don't go crazy and buying it for DSLR unless you're doing it as a career. Just get the iPhone. It costs $80, but I hardly ever use it. I probably use it like once, twice a year. I prefer the selfie stick, like I said. It's lighter, easier to maneuver. Uh, this one makes it more stable, but I already have steady hands because I trained myself to do it. So because I have steady hands, it's easier for me to just take a selfie stick and put it in my bag. Uh, but that is how you should be filming. I've gone over the steps. If I missed something, just leave it in the comments. Leave a thumbs up if you really like this series. Uh, I will continue making this series. It's going to be an 8 to 10 part. Now that you finished part 1, let's start part 2.